This is an idea that I pulled out of some old magazine years ago. I tried it back then and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, so I'm going to do a bunch more and I'll bring you along for the ride. These are just cheap uh, Atro scale cars. Um, this one says EKO or FKO or something like that on the bottom of it. This one doesn't even say. I've seen them in kits from Model Power with, you know, three or four of these things for way too much money or something. They're okay as background cars, I guess. I don't know. They, they look kind of, what do we got here? Mid seventies, which is perfect for my era. The Beetle, of course, is a uh, icon of the late sixties and seventies. Um, I've got a bunch more, but these are the two that I'm going to use. My plan is to have a, a scrap yard on my railroad as a source of traffic. Um, and have uh, uh, open gondolas full of uh, scrap metal coming out of it, going to the steel mill somewhere off the layout. So, uh, one of the things that I'm going to ship out occasionally on that is scrap cars. But... I don't want to destroy these as cheap and yeah, average as they are. Um, they cost money and yeah, they're not, they're not bad for what they are. But what I'm going to do is make some crushable ones out of tin foil or aluminum foil or cooking foil, depending on your country of origin. Uh, and this is what we had in the kitchen at the moment. It's a little thinner than I would like for this it calls itself heavy duty i think you need the extra heavy duty to do this really well but we're going to try and make do i'm going to just get rid of this uh this big reflective chunk out of the way for a minute here so um basically you just cut a chunk a little bit bigger than the car um that'll do i'll get that out of here so it doesn't offend the camera too badly and you just or we smush it down sort of over the car and sort of work it all the way down so you don't get too many big wrinkles you are going to get some wrinkles that's inevitable because you're trying to form metal foil over a three-dimensional shape but this part goes fairly care fairly quickly um i'm trying trying to make it conform sort of to the windows and and whatnot and Okay, that's not perfect either, but that doesn't matter. Remember, these are going to be cars in a scrapyard. Now, once you get it sort of roughly punched down, then the uh, the, the more time-consuming bit comes. You sort of rub it down. I've got a skewer dowel. It's sharpened, but the tip I've rounded off on some sandpaper. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Uh, and this end I've also rounded over a bit. Um, you could also use... These are some surplus dental tools and a couple of them have sort of rounded ends on them or you'd sand off the end of a paintbrush handle and use that. And basically you just burnish down your foil to pick up as much of the detail as you can. You can sort of see the Volkswagen hood happening here. Um, so what you're trying to do is get a reasonable amount of wrinkles out. You want it to be able to hold its shape and look like a car. In places where the foil did fold and crumple, just keep burnishing and sort of smooth it down. Um, even go into the wheel well. It doesn't matter if you tear it in the wheel well, because I'm probably not going to leave the tires on the car anyway. And here you can get some of the door detail. Move down over the back. There's the back window you can see, the bumper. And again, where it kind of really, really creased up and looks horrible, just smooth it down. Remembering, of course, that these are eventually going to be in a scrap pile. So if there is some dents and wrinkles in the metal work, well, a scrap vehicle that's waiting for the crusher is probably going to have those anyway, isn't it? So just... Smooth that down around the wheel wheel. Okay, so that's obviously a VW Beetle, isn't it? 
this thing. Um, this one has some sharper details. It's got fins. So again, we'll just smooth it down. And you can see where it's sort of crumpled over the door there. If you do some of that, that sort of smooths it out enough. And you can fold it underneath to get the excess out of the way. That's not a big hairy deal. We'll deal with that later. Let's try this dental tool just for the fun of it. That smooths it out pretty well. I don't think it matters if you use the smooth side or the rough side of the foil. I've got the, the less shiny side out in this case, at least partially so I don't blow the camera's uh, optics out, but also just because in the later stages it's going to get painted. And I think it'll take the paint a little bit cleaner. Not sure, that's working okay. Let's try the paintbrush handle. Yeah, actually, I think the softer things like the wood and the plastic work better. There we go. Close enough. Okay, now that we've got those roughed in, that looks reasonably car-ish. You can actually see some of the, the bumper and the headlight detail and the grill and stuff. So now we'll just kind of scrape using the edge of the knife and just cut it off flush with the underside. Get rid of some of this excess. I'm also going to cut out the wheel wells a little bit too. Um, because once these are in the scrap yard or heading to the crusher, they're probably not going to have tires on them anymore. Um, that'll be going to a different part of the metal recycling process, I would expect. Anyway, just trim that out. The fact that that missed on the corner of the bumper, I'm not all that concerned, really. I'm just going to trim out these last couple. Yeah, this is, I think this would work better I had a little bit heavier foil, but I'm going to go with it. And then just kind of gently spread it out a little bit. And lift it off the car body. If it gets slightly smushed, we can nudge it back into shape later. But there we go. One Volkswagen. Massage that bumper underneath a little bit there. There we go. Now I'll just I'll finish that one up and through the magic of editing or things I made earlier, there's a couple more and I've got some other ones kicking around here too. So the next step is to give these some paint so they don't look quite so bright and shiny. So I'm getting ready for painting these things. I had to figure out how to hold them, and I think this is going to work. Let's put some loops of tape up on the tail end of these clothespins. And then sort of roughly, lightly stick that inside the car. The reason I'm not doing anything too, uh, too fancy, one, because I just don't do fancy too much, uh, but... The real reason is that I don't want to put too much pressure on these things and I don't want them to blow away in spray paint because I'm going to be spray painting them. Um, so that's why we need to hold them on here like this. And I think this will do. I'm not pushing them down hard because I don't want to shred them taking them off. But I think that'll be enough. Okay, let's find a place to paint these guys now. And the place to paint them is at my other workbench. Um, so I've just got some paper laid down, got this out here, and the paint du jour is oxide primer. Which is a reasonable approximation for rust, so that makes it the base coat.
there's any bare metal showing through that's not going to bother me too much because a crushed and damaged car is going to have some scrapes of metal showing through I'm guessing I'm going to get some on the underside too just so I don't have anything too shiny there done all well, there is to that now the most time, con time consuming process of the whole thing waiting for paint to dry do you want to watch that didn't think so okay it's a couple hours later the paint is dried now let's see if I can get this tape off here without completely destroying that's not so bad well that's all right wait I'll just quickly untape these and carry on with the next step those look like ridiculously rusty old beat up cars good so the next step is to make them look like they had some normal paint on them at one point um i'll get another eh, i'll just keep using these cups i guess um and there's a few different ways that you can do this of course because there's a few different ways you can do anything uh let's see if this kind of yellowy oh that's way too much the label calls it buttercream um i'm just going to make up a little wash here quickly um which is basically just thinned out paint uh it's not water thin but it's I don't know, somewhere between milk and pancake syrup, I guess. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I may thin it out. I'm not sure. I suppose I could have left it on the on the uh, holders, couldn't I? So I'm wanting some of the rest to show through. And yes, I'm painting right over what should be glass. Not too bothered. But I just need to make this look, I feel this going to work pretty well. And if there's bits of rust showing through, it doesn't matter too much. These aren't foreground models. You've heard me say that before on just about everything I do. But what is your foreground models? I don't know yet. Um, I guess the, uh, the locomotives and the, and the freight cars. But none of these are going to be contest quality because I just don't care about that kind of thing. Okay. Done. One rusty old yellowish colored car. Quickly clean off my brush. More or less. Let's do this one what color should we do it in how about what is that real blue it says the next day the paint is all dried this one I'm not as thrilled about. I guess the rest of them had a matte finish on the paint. That's okay. We'll work with it. So the next thing is to load them into a freight car as a scrap car load. And for that I think I'm going to need a few more. So I'll just get some that I've done previously. This is the one that's really smushed up. Um, this is the first one that I tried to actually cut the windows out of and it worked. But, and if you want a really destroyed car, that works. But I'm not thrilled about it, so I'm going to put it on the bottom of the pile. And essentially, I'm just going to stack them up. Maybe I'll put that one in the middle. A beetle on the top of that pile. Sort of like that. I and mean, that's sort of how it's going to look, I guess. Okay, let's tip those guys back out because no railroad's going to ship something like that without 
strapping them together somehow. And you could use any number of things. You could use the miniature chain, which I think you've seen me use previously. Um, but I think I'm going to try strapping them down with the chart pack tape, which ends up looking in scale, kind of like steel banding. I've got a bunch of it that I bought from a, an art supply place that had them on sale for uh, buck 80 minus half price when I actually bought them. Um, I've got them in a couple of different sizes, but I am going to use this one that I have been using already. I'll oh, just pardon my giant fingers here. Just to reel off a chunk. And where's my pile of cars? That'll do. Just cut it off. And it's a, it's tape, it's adhesive on one side. So attaching it's not that difficult. I'm basically just gonna wrap it around and stick it to the underside. And where's something scissory here? There we go, let's attach it to the underside and snip off the excess. This doesn't have to do very much, it has to just mostly look like it's doing something. Again, I'm not doing... Uh, ah! This is stagecraft, right? This is making it look like it it's doing the job. It doesn't have to actually do the job because I want this to be a removable load ultimately. Notice how the bottom car is mostly not visible. That's okay. That's, I put the one that's the most trashed and has the least detail on the bottom. So then let's put it in there and there's something obviously holding it together. I'll just quickly do the other ones, and uh, and that's it for this wee project. So there we go. There's uh, there's the cars loaded in to the scrap gun, and a few more waiting in the background to be loaded, and off to the crusher and the mill, I guess, somewhere off the end of the railroad. Hope you enjoyed that, or at least found it interesting, gave you some ideas. Um, like I said at the beginning, this isn't my original idea. I swiped it from a magazine that was decades old when I first saw it, probably 20 years ago. Feel free to uh, borrow, adapt, modify. Um, if you use this for your layout, uh, put a link down in the description and share it with everybody else. I'd love to see it. Thanks again for watching. I will talk to you later.